Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX will make its fourth attempt to recover its booster on a landing platform. Pipistrel is testing hybrid electric power. EAA is urging members to oppose ATC privatization. I'm Brie Cross, it's February 22, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX will make a fourth attempt to land a Falcon 9 booster on an automated barge in the ocean following the launch of the SES-9 satellite currently planned for Wednesday of this week. Luxembourg-based SES is the owner of the satellite. The latest version of the Falcon 9 booster will carry the satellite to an orbit of more than 22,000 miles above the equator. According to an SES news release, the launch is planned from Cape Canaveral, Florida, with February 22nd set as a backup date. The news independent website reports that SpaceX is in the process of conducting technical tests and pre-flight validations, but the fuel required for the orbital insertion mission will not leave enough reserve fuel to return the booster to the SpaceX landing facility in Florida, so the barge will once again be used in an attempt to recover the Falcon 9 rocket. A major step towards electric-powered air travel was achieved earlier this month with the power-up of the world's most powerful hybrid electric powertrain for aviation in a project led by Pipistrel. The 268-horsepower propulsor, developed during the project Hypestair, can run in three modalities which are electric-only mode using batteries, generator-only mode, or hybrid mode combining both power sources. All powertrain components developed by Siemens during the project represents the state-of-the-art of electric flight propulsion. The drive motor delivers 268 takeoff horsepower and 200 horsepower continuous and the generator, which is driven by a turbo-normalized engine, delivers 134 horsepower. Pipistrel CEO Ivo Boscaro said in part, quote, We are proud of what the hype stair represents for the development of electric flight. It demonstrates the possibility for general aviation class aircraft to be electrically powered, and it confirms the vision of Pipistrel. In the upcoming months, extensive testing will continue to simulate typical mission profiles covered in the performance study and to validate the hybrid drive concept and performance. After the break, EAA says ATC privatization will not deliver the goods. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Experimental Aircraft Association is urging its members to contact their congressional representatives and express opposition to the ATC privatization plan in the Aviation Innovation Reform and Reauthorization Act. Included in the act is a mandate to separate the nation's air traffic control system from the FAA to be managed and operated by a not-for-profit, non-governmental entity. EAA's Jack Pelton said in a news release, quote, Let's lay out the facts on this. Moving to a privatized ATC system would not increase efficiency or safety, nor would it save any significant money. What it would do is create an additional aviation bureaucracy since the FAA would still remain, and also create a government-approved monopoly on air traffic services that is dominated by airlines and commercial aviation interests. This will hurt the safest and most complex aviation system in the world, which is why EAA is unequivocally opposed. The list of EAA concerns for ATC privatization include few promise savings or efficiency improvements, likely increase in cost, airline dominance of ATC governance, GA will lose services over time, and the loss of government oversight. EAA members can find contact information and send correspondence to their House and Senate representatives through EAA's Rally Congress online portal. Each week, we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. 
In this attempted airliner landing during Storm Emojin, the pilot makes a split-second decision to abort the landing and execute a go-around. The pilot and the airplane performed well. Search The Moment Pilot Aborts Landing on YouTube. After these messages, Bombardier to reduce its workforce. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. In a move Bombardier calls a workforce optimization, the company will cut 7,000 jobs from its operation. The announcement came in the company's report of 2015 financial results. It's reported this workforce reduction will take place over a two-year period. The commemorative Air Force Red Tail Squadron, which is America's tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen, has announced their Rise Above Red Tail Spring Schedule. The tour begins in the eastern United States before they head across the country later this year. Lufthansa has announced a total settlement of about $12 million for the families of those lost when German Wings pilot Andreas Lubwitz intentionally flew his airplane into the side of a mountain. Attorneys have already started legal proceedings, saying the settlement is far too low. The furious pace of deal announcements for airliners expected at the Singapore Air Show did not happen this year. Both Airbus and Boeing received orders, but no earth-shaking deals were brokered. However, both plane makers expect the Asian market to be strong. A National Park ranger who tasered a drone operator in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park was justified, according to a federal judge. It's reported the drone operator refused to comply with a park ranger and was later found guilty of violating a lawful order. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Virgin Galactic took another major step towards the restart of flight testing with the unveiling of the new Spaceship 2 which was rolled out last week in a ceremony in Mojave, California. The rollout ceremony was attended by Sir Richard Branson and his family, Virgin Galactic's future astronauts and partners. Professor Stephen Hawking named the new vehicle Virgin Spaceship Unity via a recorded speech and said, quote, I would be very proud to fly on this spaceship. The short version of the spacecraft's name is the VSS Unity. The VSS Unity is the first vehicle to be manufactured by the spaceship company, Virgin Galactic's wholly owned manufacturing arm. The spaceship company will undertake integrated systems verification, followed by ground and flight tests in Mojave and ground and air exercises at its future home in Spaceport America, New Mexico. The spaceship company has already started work on the next spaceship too. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in the growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.